Today, we'll be discussing covered calls and how to create them within the Thinkorswim web app. We're going to start by learning what they are, how they work, and also how to manage them throughout the life of the trade. Now, just as a quick reminder, I will be using the web-based version of Thinkorswim, so if your platform looks a little bit different than this one, you are probably on the desktop site. In order to access this one, all you have to do is head to the website trade.thinkorswim.com and then go ahead and log in with the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. But like I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to be learning about selling covered calls, which is one of the simplest selling strategies out there. It's going to be created by first owning at least 100 shares of the underlying stock and then selling a call option against those shares. So it is technically going to be a bullish trade, but the main goal is to generate income from time decay, not so much speculate on the direction of the stock. This is going to be a pretty simple strategy to understand even if you are brand new to option trading, but I promise you it's going to make a lot more sense after we go through a few different examples. So for now, let's go ahead and pull up an option chain by using the search box right up here at the top and then throwing in the symbol of the stock that we want to trade. In this case, Apple or AAPL. After we get taken to that trades page, we can then find the option chain by coming down here below and by clicking on the little arrow on the left hand side, we can now see a list of the available expirations right down here below. Beginning first on the left hand side, we can actually see the dates of expirations themselves. So beginning here at the February 3rd of 2023 expiration and going all the way out to it looks like the December 19th of 2025 expiration. Taking a look to the right of the expiration date, we can actually see the number of days until expiration. And then coming over here to the far right hand side, we can also see the implied volatility as well. If we were to come back up and actually click on one of these expiration dates, so in this case I'm clicking on March 17th of 2023, you can then see that opens up a list of the available strikes right down the center, beginning here at the 140 and going out to 165. If you ever wanted to expand that list out even further and see further out of the money, you could either hit the more button on either side or come up here to the strikes menu in the upper right hand corner where it currently says strike six. And by clicking on that, we can then adjust the list of available right down here below. In this case, I'm going to click on 12. And by doing that, if we were to come back down here below and scroll down just a little bit, we can now see that list has expanded even further, now to include the 125 and go all the way out to 180. Looking to the left of that strikes column, you're going to find all of the call options, whereas to the right, you're going to find all of the available put options. You can also see right up here at the top, we've got some column headers here actually displaying what information is down below. So right here, we can see this column is the probability out of the money, the delta, and the current bid ask, which is essentially just the current price of those options right now. But now that you have a rough idea of what it is you're looking at here, when you actually want to place the trades themselves, it's pretty straightforward. Whenever you want to buy an option, you're going to click on the asking price. Whenever you want to sell an option, you're going to click on the bid price. Now, since we're going to be selling a covered call, the process is actually pretty easy. However, the first thing we have to do is actually buy 100 shares of the stock. So before we even click on one of these options here, we're going to need to head back up to the very top of the screen here and find the buy and sell buttons to actually buy and sell the underlying stock. And in this case, because we want to buy the stock, we obviously need to click on buy up here in the upper right hand corner. You can then see an order ticket gets built out down here below to actually buy the underlying stock to buy Apple itself. However, in my case, you can see my default quantity is only 10. So I actually need to boost that up to at least 100 shares of stock. And now I can come over here to the right and adjust the price if I wanted to. Or in this case, I want to adjust the order type from a limit order to a market order. So I buy this stock instantaneously at whatever the current price is. And now to actually place it, I'll come down here below, hit review, and then hit send to actually place it. Once placed in order to confirm it actually has filled and to see what price I filled at, I could come back up here and scroll down just a little bit to find my trade section. So right here you can see all of the trades I currently have open on Apple, or in my case the positions I have open on Apple. And right here you can see I do have 100 shares of stock. Over here on the far right you can see my trade price column tells me that I bought those shares at $150.92. 
Now that we actually have the stock, what we're going to be doing now is selling a covered call against those shares. Essentially saying that we're willing to sell those shares at a set price and give up our upside potential. And we're doing that for a fixed amount of income up front. To do that, we'll come back up here to the option chain. So I'm going to come back up and scroll up just a little bit. And the very first thing we have to do is pick the expiration date. And for me personally, I usually pick an expiration about 30 to 60 days out. And right now I actually have the perfect expiration pulled up based off that. So right here, you can see I've got the March 17th of 2023. And right here, we can see that is 43 days out, which is right in between that 30 to 60 day window. I'll discuss the expiration dates a little bit more in depth a bit later in this video, but for now we can come here and actually find the strike price that we wanted to sell. For me personally, I'm usually going to pick my strike prices based off probabilities, usually picking the one that has a roughly 70% probability of expiring out of the money. And for me, that's usually because I actually like the underlying stock and I want to keep my shares but you could sell closer to the current price if you wanted to try and increase the amount of money you're getting, but you're also going to be far more likely to be assigned. But like I said, I'll touch on that a little bit more in depth later in this video. For now, I'm going to come down here and try and find the options that have a 70% probability of expiring out of the money. In this case, it looks like that would be right here. And if we come back over to the right, that would be the 160 call. If we were to take a look at the current bid ask, I can see it's currently trading for 274 by 276. And since I want to sell this call option, I want to sell the 160 call. I'm going to be coming over here to the current bid price of 275 and clicking on that number. You can then see it immediately builds out the order ticket down here below to sell that call option. So right here, it's saying I want to sell one of the March 17th 160 calls. And it looks like down here below, I'll be collecting a total credit of $2.76. So with this trade, we're essentially telling the buyer of the call that they have the right to buy our 100 shares of Apple for $160 a share at any time they want between now and the expiration date. But because we've guaranteed this person that they can buy our shares at $160 a share for the next 43 days, it looks like, we've given up all our upside above that. So if Apple does have a big move up, we're going to miss out on all that additional profit. So if Apple moves up to $180 a share, I'm probably going to be pretty mad that I did this. However, the reason I'm doing that is because I get paid a guaranteed premium up front. So no matter what happens, if we hold this option through expiration, that money that they're going to pay us is ours. The only unknown is whether or not I'm also going to get to keep my 100 shares of Apple stock. So if Apple is below $160 a share on expiration, we're going to get to keep our stock and we keep the premium. If it's instead above $160 a share on expiration, we're going to sell our stock at $160, but I still get to keep the premium. So the ideal outcome is going to be if Apple goes up to exactly our strike price, it goes up to exactly $160, but no higher than that. So if it does that, I get to make the money from the stock going up, going up from what I bought it for all the way up to $160, and I get to keep the premium that they paid me of $2.76. Now, looking at the call itself, the absolute most amount of money I'm going to make on the option itself is going to be the credit received. So in this case, if I actually sell this call option for $2.76, the absolute most amount of money I can make is $276. Now, on the flip side, the risk on the trade is always going to be to the downside. No different than just owning the underlying stock. We're going to lose money as the stock goes down. However, unlike just owning the stock, we've also reduced our risk by the premium received. So in my case, I bought this stock for about $150 a share. So I'm risking about $15,000 in total, because theoretically, if the stock were to go to zero, that's how much money I could lose. But since I got a credit of $2.76, I've also reduced my risk by $276. So now by doing this, the most I could lose on this trade is going to be $14,724. And obviously that assumes the stock goes to zero, and I'm not exactly sure what would have to happen for Apple to go bankrupt, but it's theoretically possible. But if I was happy with that, I was happy with the risk, I was happy with the potential reward, let's go ahead and place it by coming down here below and hitting the review button, and then hitting send one more time. Now that it's been placed, if I wanted to check on it, I could always scroll down here below where I can see my trade section on Apple. And at the moment, you can see I've got that current share position on Apple, but this little symbol right here says it's a working order. 
So this means I have not actually sold this yet. It's still working. I could have also seen that by coming back up here above to the positions page, then coming to the right and opening up the activity tab. We can see all of my open orders right down here below. So because it is in this section, it means it's still open, meaning I haven't actually sold it yet. And if I come over here to the far right, we can see why I haven't sold it yet. So at the moment, this option is currently trading for $2 and roughly 73 cents, and I'm currently asking 276. So if I wanted to fill, I could either wait for that option to move up just a little bit, or I could adjust my price down in order to get a fill. If you ever want to do that, you want to edit a working order or cancel an order, you could do so by coming over here to the far left and simply check marking this little box on the left hand side. That will then open up a little menu down here below where you can then specify exactly what we want to do. Do we want to outright cancel the order or do we want to edit it in some way? In my case, since I want to get filled, I'm going to hit edit here. We can then see we get taken back to the trades page and the order is down here below. And now what I want to do is adjust this price down to the current price. And at the moment, the current bid is, it looks like 269. So I'm going to adjust it down to 269. And now I'm going to come down here and hit review and then hit send. This time we should say that the order gets filled because I am asking for the current price, the option, and it looks like it did just fill. And now right here, it shows me I've got 100 shares as well as a covered call. I could also see that by coming back up here to the positions page and this time coming down below to the actual position section and then hitting the little arrow on the left hand side of Apple. Looking back down below, we can see my 100 shares of Apple stock, as well as that covered call that we sold against it. But now that you know how to create a covered call, let's cover some of the best practices. How to pick the expiration date, how to pick your strike prices, and then when should you close out of the trade. If we begin first with the expiration date, I typically like to stick to expiration somewhere between 30 to 60 days out. It's mainly going to be because time decay starts to ramp up around that time, so going out any further than that doesn't do me much good. Now, I could also choose to sell closer to expiration and increase my degree of theta, but if I sell too close to expiration, I'm probably also going to be selling closer to the current price and then more likely to be assigned. But honestly, I think this is really up to you what you're comfortable with, but the main point being to try and avoid going out any further than 60 days or so. At that point, the theta is so low, it doesn't really do anything for you. But after you pick the expiration date, you're next going to need to find the right strikes to sell. For me personally, I'm nearly always using probabilities to pick the strike, mainly sticking to those options with a 30 delta or a 70% probability of expiring out of the money. If you instead choose to sell closer to the current price, you will get paid more premium, but you're also going to be more likely to be assigned. As you go further out of the money, you're going to get paid less money, but you're also going to be less likely to be assigned. So if we wanted to actually look at that, let's come back up here and pull up an option chain. Let's come back up here and throw in Apple again. Coming back down below and opening up the option chain, and let's actually use the February 17th expiration. Scrolling down just a little bit so we can take a closer look here. We can obviously see that the deeper we go in the money, we get paid more premium. So $8.00. $7, $7.10, you can see as I go further and further out of the money, I'm getting paid less and less money. But obviously with that, I'm also less likely to be assigned because it's obviously less likely that Apple's going to be above 160 in about two weeks from now than it is to be above 148. So I'm getting paid commensurate with the risk that I'm taking of actually getting assigned, of actually getting my shares called away from me. Now for me personally, I'm generally picking my strikes based off of these two columns over here on the left, the probability out of the money and the delta, because I generally do not want to get assigned. I don't want to get my shares called away from me. So if we were to look through these columns here, like I said, I generally pick based off the probability out of money being around 70% or so. And that's why I would probably gravitate towards this option right here, the 157 and a half. For those of you who are completely comfortable getting assigned, you could of course go closer to the money and you're going to get more premium up front, but again, you are more likely to get assigned. But after the trade has been placed, you're going to also want to have a closing strategy nailed down. Since it is a cover call, you could simply hold it all the way to expiration if you want, and the only risk is that you might be forced to sell your stock. But at a certain point, it's probably going to make more sense to simply close it out and establish a new position. So for me, I'm typically going to close out at around 50% profit, but you could hold a bit longer if you'd like. 
You could also just choose to roll them out if your profit target is ever reached, or roll them if you start to get tested. So if the stock moves up to the strike that we sold, if we don't want to get assigned and we want to maintain the position, we could roll out the option even further in time and then move up the strike price as well. Now I'm not going to dig too deep into rolling in this video, but if we were to go through an example of this for a second, let's go ahead and use my previous covered call on Apple as the example. Now since I'm already on the Apple trade page, if I were to scroll down just a little bit and then find my positions right here in the trade section, now let's just say for example's sake I sold this and Apple actually starts to move up. It starts to move up to 160 and since I don't want to get assigned, I want to roll this call out even further and ideally move it up from 160 to let's say 165. Since I'm only going to be rolling the call option, I need to come over here and uncheck the share position. And now since all I have is the covered call check marked over here, on the right hand side you're going to see a new option. And right here it says roll selected. Now as soon as you click on that, all I'm doing is placing an order to close out of my current call option while simultaneously selling a brand new one further out in time. So in this case, you can see the top option right here is to buy back the covered call that I sold. And then down here, I am selling a brand new one. It looks like a week further out in time. So what I might try and do is roll this up even further if I could. So rolling it from 160 to let's say 165 to get it out of the money. And in this case, you can see if I were to do that, it looks like I'd have to pay a debit of 85 cents. Now in my case, since I never like to roll an option for a debit, and really I never will roll an option for a debit, I'm going to come over here to the expiration date and start playing with this and see how far out in time I have to go to do this for a credit. Now in this example, of course this doesn't make a whole lot of sense since I just sold this option, but normally I would come down here below and start seeing, okay, what if I rolled it out 169 days? Oh, okay, now I'm getting a credit and now I'm getting $334 additionally on top of what I already sold it for. And now if I actually want to do this, I could come down here below and hit review and then hit send. And now what I've done is place an order to roll out my current covered call. And it looks like I'm rolling it out almost six months out in time, but I'm also collecting an additional $300 in credit to do this. But like I said, I don't want to dig too deep into rolling in this video. So check out this video if you did want to learn a little bit more about it. And honestly, that covers just about everything you need to know within here. Hopefully you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with the TOS website and how to sell covered calls within here. I know I covered a lot and I covered a lot only briefly. So if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next one.